build our YouTube. This is my next project. It's going to be a mini rocket stove. I acquired this can. Thought and thought of what to do with it. I had this one for quite a while. It's a shame I'm going to use it for what I'm going to use it for, but oh well. Well, the rocket stove has your pipe going up in the center. If you look, it's a little bit taller. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to cut the lid out here and leave this and this ridge. So when we make a hole through here, it will fit through that hole nice and clean. There's several ways I make patterns on stuff. I will just draw this on paper. I will take my compass, do the measuring, and make it so it's this diameter so the lip will stick over. So that will be a nice clean installation going to the lid. So when the lid goes on, it may not go on all the way, but you won't notice it. Because this can does stick out a small amount. If I push on it, it does flex the bottom. So it is a little bit taller. So that take, takes care of that idea. Okay. To get your pipe going inside, we're going to use just this air freshener can. I have made an alcohol stove out of this. I don't know if I'm ever going to do it again. I've taken this top out of here. And then you put your liner with your aluminum, pop can, whatever. Make these like an inch tall. I have made one with a copper bushing in there out of a one and a, like a one inch coupler for your copper pipe. I may make one of those and show up, but it's very dangerous because the more it burns, the hotter the copper gets and it will produce a flame like six inches in the air and you will not want to use it indoors. So I have been saving these to make something out of. This will be my pipe going this way. A little bit smaller, doesn't matter, whatever, how much I need. And I'm going to cut it so I save this nice ridge right here. So I'll be cutting this part out. So I want a nice solid ridge. I may just fold little ears out and rivet it to this. I haven't decided because if I put it inside, I still have to find a way to seal it. So. What I'll use for insulation, people use vermiculite. If you use dry, oil dry, your natural kitty litter, which is just clay, does work good. I've only seen a few videos on YouTube where they've used that, but vermiculite, what they want for it, for these little projects, the clay, oil dry kitty litter will work just as good. You're making an insulator to keep the heat in and also so you don't burn yourself on the outside. This should make a nice, that'll be able to snap on top of there. This will be going through the hole to make it nice and clean. You'll have a clean edge here. And as small as this is, I don't think I'll need very big sticks. It's just going to be to heat up like a cup or two cups of water. So, there you have it. I'll show the progress as I'm making it. There may be some pictures in there. In case I don't show something in video, there will still be pictures of it. I always go back and check and make sure if I left something out, I'll make a picture of it. But there we go. There's the next project. Okay, we'll show how real quick how we cut this hole out of here. What we do is we made a square on a piece of paper. Whatever, let's say this is. 58 millimeters. So we made a square on a piece of paper of 58 millimeters. And we put our X. And we double check. This was 54. Divided that in half, whatever it would be. And we made a hole in there. In the center. But what we did is we laid this down and centered it on the square first, drew a circle. Then we flipped it over on the paper and line it up and drew a circle. And then we cut it out. So we started out with this. Here was our square. You see the outside line was the bigger part. And then we laid it in there and made a square. Then we made a hole. We found our, found our center of this by using the calipers, which I just do is I 
measure the whole diameter, take half it like this, and I'll make my scratch mark. And I'll go around, I'll keep making my scratch mark. Then you'll find the center. Then I'll mark it with a Sharpie marker. You see how that was marked? And you can see the little scratches on there. Then I put like an ink pen mark or Sharpie marker. And I lay this down on here, I know it's centered before I draw around it. Okay. And when I cut this out with, I use small leftover blades. I did take a picture of the Dremel liner. I'll use small blades and I'll stay inside the circle. You can still see marker. I use black sharpening one around here. You can still see the marker. I cut inside of there. So I would leave the mark. I always leave the mark. Then I use this to go up to the mark. Kept testing it with the lid through the hole. If I seen it need to have a little more gone, say right here it needed a whole lot gone. I went right up to the line. Because it's never going to be exactly in the center. But this will fit nice. I want something to where I need to clean the birds off. I want this where it goes in the can. And the can's down the side. That's going to be a nice ridge. Next what I'll do is I do have a metal blade. It's a diamond blade. You can cut tin with pop cans if you're careful. So you don't ruin it. I will cut this off. I'm going to stay down in here a ways though. I'm going to leave as much of this lip as I can. I'm going to cut this off so it goes inside the can. I got that nice ridge. So I won't show that on the film, but you get the idea. You see how that's down in there. I will cut just uh, where my cutter blade is. But I do have a diamond one. I will cut just the minimum off. And that will just just be done the best I can do it. I'll have my gloves on. I always have a glove. Even a cloth glove will help snag this. Even a simple cloth glove, whatever you're holding on to and you're using a Dremel blade because they will cut you. Grindstones will grind in your knuckle. It's better to snag the cloth glove and break a blade or something and cut your hand. That's how I do it. I just always have a glove on the hand holding on to the item. You go putting this in the vise, you could put it between two blocks of wood but we're going to do it freehanded. I always draw a line with my blade first, then I'll cut deeper. I don't cut through it all on the first pass. I will draw a line. It makes like a valley for your cutter blade to follow. Same way with big four and a half inch grinders on metal. Always grind your line in there for the blade to follow. Okay, enough of that explanation. So I'll be doing the same thing on the hole here too. I'll make a little pattern where it has to be. It'll be the same thing with the cutter blade in this to make this hole. Same thing as making the hole in this to put the can in there or up to. So we'll get back to work and show you the next progress. This is my diamond blade. You gotta be careful with them, you'll wear them out. a pop can like butter. Some little diamond blades. Careful, you'll wear them out on tin. Don't use mod wood or end up like that. It'll look burnt. A lot of stuff works good on metal. doesn't work good on wood. But Just thought I'd show that. That's how I got that out of there.